Hello, the Lord be with you, and welcome to this midweek Lenten series titled Sounds of the Passion. I am Pastor Neil Stern from St. Peter's Lutheran Church, and it is my, my privilege to, to walk with you in following the steps that our Savior trod and going to the cross with us. Jesus did say, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Well, what sounds have we heard thus far in this midweek Lenten series? Well, uh, who am I to ask the question? I have to quiz myself. We have heard of clinking coins. We have heard tramping feet. There have been shedding tears, but also the tearing of cloth. I think I... I touched upon all of them. Today, we are going to talk about crowing rooster. Crowing rooster. The service that we have is, is a service of prayer and preaching. So we will begin with remembering how we are personally, intimately, and immediately tied to our Lord and our Savior Jesus through the waters of holy baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With these opening versicles. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and repents of evil. Jesus said, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised. For our iniquities. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory to glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our our first scripture reading for, for today is it is from Luke chapter 22, which reads as follows. Then they seized Jesus and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl seeking him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man was with him, for he too is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the saying of the Lord. How he had said to him, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsory. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. 
Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As, as I began with you here today, did share with you already that today's the sound of the passion is, is the crowing of the rooster. And with that, we will begin, but first of all, with a, a short word of prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. And nothing, nothing speaks to country living like the crowing of a rooster. Now, even for people who well, who have had little exposure to rural life, uh, they know what the rooster says. Cock a doodle doo. And everyone also knows that roosters typically crow in the morning. And for those of you who are familiar with roosters, who grew up with roosters, there were probably times when you felt like shooting those roosters because you were annoyed because you wanted to go back to sleep. No, I I didn't know this previous to the sermon, but, but roosters have what's called an internal uh, circadian rhythm clock of 23.8 hours. Well, that means just like an alarm clock, the rooster has his own little, little bell that goes off inside his head. And that's why you hear them about the same time every morning. And it just so happens that roosters crow in response to daylight. And that's why we no notice their particular crowing at a certain time of the day. The, the bird itself has ancestry in far eastern countries like Myanmar, Thailand, India, East Indies, and China. In the course of time, the birds became more and more domesticated, and we now have chickens everywhere. And that's why we even hear reference to a certain rooster very early on Good Friday. But first, a little background to someone we know fairly well. Simon Peter. He is an interesting person. He comes across outspoken and brash. He speaks his mind, and he often leaps before he looks. He's capable of great insight, and yet two seconds later, he lands two feet inside his mouth. Well, case in point, look what happens in the upper room. Jesus he tweaks the Passover to become what we know of as the Lord's Supper. The disciples then get into an argument over who's the greatest. And Jesus, after Jesus smartens them up to be humble, he tells of how each of them will be assigned a place in his kingdom to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. Well, Jesus then gets personal with Simon Peter. He gets personal with Simon Peter.
Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Well, Peter then said to Jesus, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Now, what does Peter express? What does he express? He expresses loyalty. And even as a short definition, look at this. Loyalty, well defined, is a strong feeling of support or allegiance. Well, you can be loyal to a cause, but loyalty implies a, a relationship. It is the resolve to stand for or behind someone. Loyalty speaks to character, a willingness to put someone else's needs before your own. To be loyal is to be selfless. What happens after Peter expresses his loyalty? Jesus said to him, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny me three times that you know me. I'm sure that Peter was stung by those words. Probably took his breath away. Didn't Jesus know of his devotion? The others might leave, but Peter would never leave. He protested with all vigor. Never, Lord. I'll never leave you. Even if I have to die with you, I'll never deny you. Jesus sat, he just sat quiet, gently and knowingly. From the upper room, they traveled to the Mount of Olives. Jesus asks them to pray with him, but prayer comes hard and they, they drift off in sleep. The betrayer comes with a small army of men with swords, spears, clubs. Peter is no longer drowsy. Peter grows angry. He couldn't just stand there and do nothing, could he? Then he remembered the short sword that he brought along. He, he lunges forward and lashes at the nearest man. He misses his neck, but he, but he gets his ear. Peter, calls Jesus, put that thing away. Don't you know that I could call out to my father and he would send more than 12 legions of angels? Sheepishly, he steps into the shadow of night as Jesus heals the man's ear. Further into the night he runs as Jesus yields to their arrest while securing the safety of the disciples. Peter runs, but he can't abandon Jesus. He finds a way to enter into the courtyard of the high priest. He can see Jesus kind of through the crowd. And pulling his cloak about him, he lingers in the background. A young woman draws near. You, you were with him too. Spotted, he pretends to be someone else. No, that wasn't me. I don't know who you're talking about. Now, turning about, he, he kind of moves the other way. Freezing and cold in sweat, he tries to find comfort by the fire. Another servant girl gives him the eye. Now, who's brash? You were with that man, Jesus of Nazareth, weren't you? Without thinking, he blurts out, I don't know him. I've never met the man. The inquisitors relent a bit, but 
soon aren't satisfied. He is one of them. I know he is. Someone insisted. Yeah, he, he's one of them, all right. Can't you tell by his accent? He, he's, he's from Galilee. Well, Peter, he's, he feels cornered. He's scared. Protesting, he calls out. What's wrong with you people? As surely as the Lord lives, I do not know the man. The sound reverberated just as the day was breaking upon the horizon. And there was Jesus looking right at Peter. Can we imagine the depth of, of that sorrow of disowning Jesus? If, if loyalty implies faithfulness to a relationship, in its absence, what does it stir up? I'll, I'll give you a choice. It can either be guilt or shame. Guilt says, well, I, I did something wrong. Shame, it says, I am wrong. When Peter was disloyal to Jesus, did he feel, did he feel guilty or did he feel ashamed? Shame, not worthy, not worthy to be loved, accepted, and valued. For Simon Peter, not only was he ashamed for being disloyal, but he was also embarrassed. He made his bold claim to go to prison, even to go to death if necessary for Jesus. And he did this before the other disciples. Have you ever been disloyal? The question is asked rhetorically, because I say to you, join the club. Every once in a while, something happens that really lets us know that we have failed and that we have let God or someone else down. As if we need a rooster to remind us. And we know, and we know we can't look down upon Peter. In many different ways, we also let our Lord down. We fail Him. Called to proudly proclaim our faith, we keep quiet. Urged to deny ourselves and follow Him, we cower away in fear. Jesus knew Peter would disown Him, but He also knew He would turn back. Peter wept bitterly, but he prayed out to God to forgive him, and, and Jesus did forgive him, and Peter would display a loyalty that, that went the distance. He would be a pillar of strength in, in his family of faith. All because of the new life he received in grace. Let me read to you what happened in a resurrection appearance. From John chapter 21. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. 
He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly I, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands. And another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This Jesus said to show by what kind of death Peter was to glorify God. And after saying this, Jesus said to Peter, Follow me. On, on three occasions, Jesus asks Peter, Do you love me? And in professing earnestly his love for Jesus, Jesus directs him to, to care for others. Feed my lambs. Tend my my sheep. Feed my sheep. Jesus reinstates Peter three times, the same amount of times that he disowned him. Where shame made him feel unworthy, Jesus infuses Peter. He, he fills Peter with the honor of serving him. As Peter sees him alive after he was dead now this is now this is powerful with the virtue of loyalty peter was redeemed from the emptiness of shame he was no longer wrong but right in god's mercy through christ jesus And that is the same mercy for you. You too are redeemed of your shame. You too have been made right in the mercy of your Savior. And you too are honored to serve him. So, let the rooster crow. The rooster announces the dawning of a new day. And such it is for you. By the immeasurable love of God in Jesus, you have new life in the love of your Savior. And it all started at first light, on that first Sunday, when Jesus rose from the grave. As the perfect Son of God, Jesus was loyal to the call to save you and me. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus. Amen. In our prayers today, as we reflect upon the crowing rooster and how it really heightens or enlightens the, the virtue of loyalty, we're going to be praying about how, well, not about how, but we're going to be asking God to, to lead us, to help us, and that we would be loyal, like within our families, that we would also be loyal within our vocation or our calling. And that vocation and calling could be also about how we are loyal to our families as well. It's about speaking to, to wherever we are at in life, to how God is certainly involved, in, um, intimately so by the Holy Spirit in our lives, to be there for other people. But also, not only there for other people, but also a loyalty in our faith walk 
in, in following Jesus. So with that, let us pray. Lord Jesus, ultimately so, you are our prophet, our priest, and our king. In your word to us today, you remind us as to how that you not only foretold the word of God, but you also foretold of how Peter would, would disown you. And we come before you in a spirit of confession, knowing that we too have, have fallen in denying you. But you have restored us in your mercy. You have restored us in your grace. Today is a, a new day because of the first light that shone of your grace and mercy on that, on that first Sunday when you rose from the grave. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as you have blessed us in this life, you have blessed us to be among those who are near and dear to us. We know that, that we are in a place of responsibility to care and to love. It's not only responsibility, but it is a privilege. But we do know that we have the strongest influence in the lives of people who are very close to us, and that would be members of our family. So we pray that you would help us to, to be loyal to, our, to our, our, our parents, our children, our siblings, and others within our family, that we would continue to encourage, to uphold in prayer those who are near and dear to us. Help us to be what we need to be to support those who look up to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, Lord Jesus, you called the disciples to follow you, to deny themselves, take up their crosses, and go through whatever lies on the road ahead in a faithfulness in following you, Lord Jesus. And we pray that you would, that you would be so intimate in our lives, that wherever we may be, it could be a calling, a vocation, a, wherever we may be with other people, that you would lead us to know that you choose to, to be with us and that you're already present in the lives of other people. And there are many among us who do not know you, Lord Jesus, as Savior. And by our vocation and by our calling, whether it be within your, your church, even outside of your church, that you still desire that we would be your salt and your light. So we pray, Lord, that, that our influence would be, would be felt, would be seen, would be noticed, and that others would see you through our words and our actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord Jesus, as you spoke to the disciples, you also speak to us. So lead us to deny ourselves, take up our crosses, and follow you. We thank you that you also restore us so that as we have new life in your grace and your mercy, that you also empower us by speaking to us by your word, but also dwelling within us by the Holy Spirit. So that Holy Spirit, as you are reigning within us, that we pray that with measured steps and true, that we would follow you, Lord Jesus wherever you lead us. In your name we pray. Amen. We continue in prayer. Great Redeemer, strong to save, you came to earth to take our place under the law, to suffer and to die that we might live in the quiet of this place and in the calmness of this moment. Help us Ponder in our hearts all that your sacrifice now means to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make ours a faithful walk to Calvary. As the weeks pass and the record of your love unfolds, may we ponder what this central story of the Christian truth 
means to us. The upper room, the garden, the high priest's court, Pontius Pilate's palace, the road of sorrows, Golgotha. Was there ever a more melancholy chronicle than this? Yet what glory and what promise and what triumph. And it is all for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We repent of all those sins which brought that death on you. Dear Savior, forgive us and restore to us your peace. By the very suffering and death which our sins brought down upon you, you free us from our shame and guilt. What language is there to express our utter thanks to you, dear Savior Lord? Amen. Please pray with me this uncolic prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you sent your only begotten Son into this world of dust and ashes so that he might bring new life to the world. Strengthen us as we share his words of forgiveness and life that many rise from the dust of despair and look to you for hope and new life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our closing prayer, and again, please join me. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously brought me to this day. Guide me, Holy Spirit, to listen to the sounds of the Passion, in that all that I say or do, I honor my Savior in words and actions to be his light and salt to the world. For into your hands, Heavenly Father, I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. And our closing blessing, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. That concludes our, our time together. I invite you to join with me next week where we will then uh, think about, well, listen to uh, the Shouting Mob, our midweek of Lent 5. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>